Hello and welcome to today's lesson looking at stellar magnitudes which forms part of the A-level astrophysics course. So in today's lesson we're going to try and define the concepts of absolute and apparent magnitude for stars. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should know that brightness is a subjective scale of measurement, define the concepts of absolute and apparent magnitude, and then calculate different astronomical values based on magnitude values. So we're going to cover the following part of the specification in the A-level AQA astrophysics option. We're going to look at classification by luminosity and we're going to look at absolute magnitude. So we can, we, when we first observe stars by looking at the night sky, the first property we can deduce is the brightness of the star. Now all stars have a brightness because they emit electromagnetic radiation. This is how we know they exist. Now the brightness of a star is the star's most fundamental property. Now when the ancient Greeks first looked to the night sky, they believed they could classify the stars due to their brightness. Because the ancient Greeks believed that all stars were the same distance away from the Earth because they believed they all existed on the same shell above the Earth. So therefore the ancient Greeks reasoned that the brightness of a star was due to the power output of a star. Now we can classify stars due to their power output. Now the name that we give to the out power output of a star is called its luminosity. So the luminosity of a star is the amount of energy radiated out by a star per second because we're looking at the power of the star. Now luminosity is measured in watts and the luminosity of our own sun is 4.0 times 10 to the 26 watts. So the intensity of a star is the power received by an observer per unit area. So we can say that the intensity of the star's radiation is the power received over the area. So therefore the intensity of a star as measured from a particular observable point is measured in watts per meter squared. And the intensity is the effective brightness of the star, how bright the star appears to the observer. Now the area of the sphere of rotation is emitted is proportional to the separation between the star and the observer squared, in essence the diameter of the sphere of radiation squared. So the intensity of a star follows the inverse square law with respect to distance from the that star. So if the energy has been emitted from a point or a sphere like a star, then the intensity obeys the inverse square law, because the energy spreads out in spherical shells, where the area is equal to 4 pi d squared, where d is the distance from the star, which shows us that intensity is directly proportional to 1 over distance squared, proving the inverse square law. Now to use the inverse square law, you've got to have the assumption that the star gives out an even amount of energy in every single direction. So to clarify, for any star, the luminosity is the total power output of the star, but its intensity is the apparent brightness observed for that star by the observer. Now, as a star's luminosity is the total power output at all wavelengths, we often refer to it as the bolometric luminosity. Now, it wouldn't be helpful to catalogue a star's bolometric luminosity for observers to use with obser optical telescopes, so therefore we've got to consider what something which we'll call the visible luminosity. Now, when the ancient Greeks first looked to the night sky, they believed that, like we said before, that they could classify the stars due to their brightness in the night sky. However, the issue is brightness is a subjective scale of measurement. Now, it means that it's, it's subjective because they're different distances from the Earth in the universe. Universe. So the closer a star is to planet Earth, the brighter it will appear in the night sky. Now in this module, we will ignore the effect of air pollution, atmospheric distortion and human interpretation. However, these are also other factors as to why brightness as a measurement is subjective to the observer. Now, however, the Greeks were unaware of this issue and classified the stars in the night sky based on their brightness as observed from the Earth 
with the naked human eye. Now, the ancient Greek who first did this was called Hipparchus, and therefore he called the brightness of a star its apparent magnitude. So this means we're only considering the visible radiation emitted by the astronomical object because we're just considering it as it's observed by the naked human eye. So this is the visible luminosity of the star, which is important when using optical telescopes to observe objects. Now, the apparent magnitude, because it is basically the effective brightness to the observer, is measured in terms of intensity, watts per meter squared. However, Hipparchus came up with his own scale of measurement as these units hadn't been established yet. It would take another approximately 2,000 years for this to take place. Now, apparent magnitude is given the symbol small m. So, Hipparchus's scale was subjective. It was completely dependent on Hipparchus's interpretation of how bright the stars were in the night sky. So, we call this the Hipparchus scale. So, Hipparchus decided there will be a six-point scale to apparent magnitude. Magnitude 1 will be the stars with the brightest apparent magnitude. Magnitude 6 will be the stars with the dimmest apparent magnitude. Magnitude. Now, in the time since Hipparchus uh, has lived, we have amended the scale to make it more mathematical. This is because before this, the scale was too subjective to human interpretation. So with modern measuring techniques such as photography, CCD cameras, a more quantitative approach to apparent magnitude can be made. So these devices allow the intensity of the light from a star to be measured, so the apparent magnitude scale now takes on a more precise meaning. Now, the branch of astronomy that deals with this is called photometry, and towards the end of the 1700s, William Herschel devised one simple but inaccurate method to measure the brightness of the stars. Now, one key point that arose from his work was that the first magnitude star is about 100 times as bright or delivers 100 times much light to the Earth as that of a sixth magnitude star. Now, in 1856, Norman Pogson formalized the system by defining a magnitude 1 star to be 100 times brighter than a magnitude 6 star. So a, magnet, a 5 magnitude difference corresponds to a difference in intensity of about 100 times. So this means the difference of 1 on the magnitude scale corresponds to a difference of intensity of about 2.51 times because 100 to the power of a fifth is approximately equal to 2.5. One, which we call Pogson's ratio. So this means that apparent magnitude is a logarithmic scale. Now the zero point of Pogson's scale was originally defined by assigning Polaris, a star in the night sky, a magnitude of exactly two. However, there was an issue because it was later discovered that Polaris was a slightly variable star whose, whose luminosity changed, sorry, its, its apparent magnitude changed. So therefore they switched to Vega as the standard reference star by an assigning the brightness of Vega as the definition of a zero magnitude at any specified wavelength. So this is very important that this is only true for visible light wavelengths and different stars have different apparent magnitudes for different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, but this is not covered in the A-level course. So this is a representation of the apparent magnitude scale. So, we can calculate the ratio of brightness by using the following equation. Intensity of star 2 over intensity of star 1 is equal to 2.51 to the power of m1 minus m2, the, the difference in the apparent magnitudes of the stars. So, for example, if we wanted to find the ratio of brightness between a magnitude 1 and a magnitude 6 star, we would do 2.51 to 6 minus 1, so 2.51 to the power of 5, which is 100. So, this means, like we said before, the difference in brightness between magnitude 1 and 2 is 2.51 to the power of 1, which is 2.51 times. 1 and 3, it's 2.51 to the power of 2, or 6.25 times as bright. 1 and 4 is 2.51 to the power of 3, which is 16 times as bright. 1, point, 1 and 5 is 2.51 to the power of 4, which is 40 times. And finally, 1 and 6 is 2.51 to the power of 5, which is approximately 100 times. So it's important to remember this change in scale when estimating possible apparent magnitudes of stars in the sky. Now, we have 
to further amend the Parker's scale in recent years as the Parker's did his measurements with the naked human eye. Now, measurements with advanced telescopes can now observe stars with an apparent magnitude greater than 6. Now, we have to further amend this scale in recent years because Hipparchus did not realise that the Sun was in fact a star and is very bright. So the Sun has to have a negative apparent magnitude to fit on this particular scale and the Sun is minus 26.74. The Moon has to have a negative apparent magnitude to fit on this scale and Venus has to have a negative apparent magnitude to fit on this scale. So here is a scale of apparent magnitudes with the Sun at minus 26, the full Moon at minus 19, Venus at minus 4, the star Sirius at minus 1.5, Vega at 0, and we've got Polaris there at 2. So again, here is another scale of apparent magnitude. Now remember, the lower the apparent magnitude, the brighter the star or astronomical object in the night sky, whilst the higher the apparent magnitude, the dimmer the star or astronomical object in the night sky. Now the advent of the Hubble Space Telescope has meant objects with apparent magnitudes of 30 that can now be observed, and it's important to remember that negative on this scale means brighter. Now care must be taken when you comparing magnitudes. Does a bigger magnitude mean brighter, which is greater intensity, or dimmer, bigger number? It's safer to talk about brighter or dimmer magnitudes rather than this concept of larger or smaller numbers. Now again, just to help you out, here is a scale of apparent magnitudes. So you can see the difference in, how, in brightness relative between each stars. Now, the apparent magnitude is subjective because it depends on the distance from the Earth. So it's not a very good measure of an intrinsic property of the star. So if we wanted to compare the power outputs of the star, the apparent magnitude isn't ideal because it also considers distance. Now, therefore, we came up with another measurement for stars, another property, and we call that the absolute magnitude. Now, the absolute magnitude is a more absolute measurement of brightness. The absolute magnitude is the brightness of a star if the star was 10 parsecs away. Now remember, one parsec is 3.26 light years, so it's half, it's, it will be 32.6 light years away. Now the absolute magnitude is given the symbol big M, and it's a measure of a star's inherent brightness. So this means that absolute and apparent magnitudes are measured on the same logarithmic scale. So this means that any star closer than 10 parsecs to us would appear dimmer with this definition and have a higher absolute magnitude, which includes the Sun. Now, this also means that any star further away than 10 parsecs to us would appear brighter with this definition and have a lower absolute magnitude. Remember, negative means brighter on this scale. So the absolute and apparent magnitudes are linked with the following equation. Small m minus big M equals 5 log times by d over 10, where d is the distance between the star and the Earth in parsecs, and that's why we've got to use parsecs because the definition of absolute magnitude includes the concept of parsecs. Now, this equation is given to you in your examination equation book. Now, when we use this equation, that apparent magnitude minus absolute magnitude is equal to 5 log distance between the star and the Earth in parsecs, over 10, a quick glance shows us that stars which are closer than 10 parsecs, 32.6 light years, have a brighter or more negative apparent magnitude than absolute magnitude because small m minus big M is less than zero. We know that stars further than 10 parsecs have a dimmer or more positive apparent magnitude than absolute magnitude because small m minus big M is greater than zero and if small m equals big M, the star must be 10 parsecs away. Now we can see the relationship between the values with the following table of values so you can see how they link to each other. Now it's important that if you know the absolute magnitude, you can use this to work out the distance it is from the Earth. So this is a method used when a star is too far away to measure its distance via the parallax method. So here is a sample question you could be asked in an examination. The star Eludra in the constellation Canis Major has an apparent magnitude of 2.5 and is 3,200 light years from the Earth. Calculate the absolute magnitude of Eludra. Well, you use the equation small m minus big M is equal to 5 log d over 10. You 
you rearrange that to make big M the absolute magnitude of the subject, you convert D into parsecs. Now remember, one parsec is 3.26 light years, so 3,200 over 3.26 gives us 98.5, so 981.5 parsecs. So therefore, you pop this into the equation, you work it out, and you get an absolute magnitude of minus 7.5, which means it's going to be a very, very powerful star, because a negative, again, means very bright on this scale. So here are the key facts of the topic. The luminosity L of a star is the amount of energy in joules that it radiates per second and is measured in watts. The brightness of a star at a given distance r is given by brightness is equal to luminosity over 4 pi r squared. The Parker's scale of apparent magnitude assigns a perceived brightness to stars as seen from the Earth. The value of small m is a number with no unit. The more negative this value, the brighter the star appears. And Pogson's law relates a difference in magnitude to a ratio of brightness, where a difference of one magnitude corresponds to a brightness ratio of 2.51. Now the absolute magnitude of a star is its apparent magnitude if it were located at 10 parsecs away from the Earth, and the apparent magnitude small m and the absolute magnitude big R are related by the equation small m minus big M is equal to 5 log 10 d over 10, where m minus small m minus big M is called the distance modulus. So to clarify, in this lesson, you should have been able to define what apparent magnitude is, understand the Aparca scale, that dimmest visible stars have a magnitude of 6, the relation between brightness and apparent magnitude, and the difference of 1 on a magnitude scale is equal to an intensity ratio of 2.51, where brightness is a subjective scale of measurement. Now, and we should finally be aware that, that absolute and apparent magnitude linked together with the equation small m minus big M is equal to 5 log d over 10. So we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson. We know that brightness is a subjective scale of measurement. We can define the absolute and apparent magnitude and we can calculate different astronomical values based on magnitude values. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at stellar magnitudes and have a lovely day.